بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم من بعد عيب حبة في الله يدينا على الاستدي of هذه دعوة وعقيدة لما شيخ مقبل بن هادي الوادعي الله يرحمه we were talking about leaving the salat and we talked about takfir the sheikh said لا نكفر مسلم بذم إلا شرك بالله أو ترك الصلاة أو ردة عياذنا عياذنا الله وإياكم من من ذلك. The Sheikh said رحمه الله عليه that we do not declare a Muslim due to their sins to be a disbeliever unless it is shirk with Allah سبحانه وتعالى associating a partner with Allah. We spoke about that. O Turk of Salat, or leaving this prayer, or Ridda, or leaving Islam completely. And he said, and we seek refuge in Allah, us and you from that. Ahabatu Fillah, the Shaykh said, and this is very important, regarding the issue of leaving the prayer. Qala Shaykh, rahimahullah ta'ala, hadhi mas'ala min masayla liti akhtalafa ahla ilm fiha. فمن أهل العلم من لا يراه كافر ويستدل بقوله عز وجل إن الله لا يغفر أن يشرك به ويغفر ما دون ذلك لمن يشاء. The Sheikh said رحمة الله عليه that the issue of leaving the prayer is something that the ulama have differed over. Okay, the 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 salaf of this ummah they have differed and we'll talk very briefly about some that most of the sahaba رضي الله تعالى عنهم أجمعين or the Sahaba and the Tabi'een, uh, they were on that the one who left the prayer, a, a huge majority of them, a huge group of the Sahaba and the Tabi'een, were on the opinion that the one who left the prayer was a hypocrite, was a disbeliever. And also Ahl Hadith, Ahl Hadith also, and according to the Madhab of Imam Ahmed as well. But majority of the other scholars hold the other view that the person is not a disbeliever, but that they are a wicked sinner who cannot be trusted, etc., etc. So the Sheikh said, Rahmatullahi, that this mas'ala, Ahl al they differ. And he said, and from Ahl al is those who believe, uh, who, who believe that the person who has left the prayer is not a disbeliever. And they use as evidence the ayah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, in Allah la yaghfiru wa yushiru bihi wa yaghfiru ma'aduna dhalik na meyisha. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, verily Allah does not forgive that you commit shirk with him, but he forgives other than that for whomsoever he pleases. So for them, they use that as evidence to say that leaving the salat is something Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala might forgive the person for. So that they that is evidence that they are not a disbeliever but if they died upon kufr major kufr then of course they there will be no forgiveness for them so that that is their their argument and the logic of those who use that as evidence which is a jama'at kabir min ulama a big group of the ulama hold this view and they also use we yasdilla aidan bi hadith ubadah ibn samit radiyallahu ta'ala anhu an nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam qala خمس صلوات كتبهن الله على عباري في اليوم والليلة فمن أتى بهن كن له نور وبرهان ومن لم يت بهن لم يكن له نور ولا برهان وكان إلى الله إن شاء عذبه وإن شاء غفر له وهو في جامع الصحيح. This is a hadith, a صحيح hadith. They also use this hadith, which is a sound narration. And it's a hadith of Ubadah ibn Samit radiyallahu ta'ala anhu who said that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said the five prayers have been uh, ordained for you by Allah uh, ordained for Allah's servants during the day and in the night. Whoever uh, does those prayers then they will have light <coughs> and uh, burhan you know, and, uh, and a proof. And whoever does not uh, establish those prayers, then they will have no nur, nur, no light, no burhan. And it will be up to Allah. If He wills, He will punish them. And if He wills, He will forgive them. So they use this, and this is also uh, a strong uh, uh, nus to use 
as evidence to show that the person who leaves the prayer is perhaps not a disbeliever, but a wicked sinner as well, who might perhaps be forgiven by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they use those two evidences to say that the person who's left the prayer is not a disbeliever. And then the Shaykh said, they also use as, uh, as evidence the hadith of Anas uh, which is the hadith where the Prophet said uh, that those people who say la ilaha illallah will be taken out of the hellfire. So they use those three evidences to support that the person who has left the prayer is not a disbeliever. However, as we said, a Jama'at Kabir from Ahba Hadith and the Sahaba and the Tari'een say, no, the person who's left the prayer is a, uh, hip uh, is a uh, disbeliever. They have left the fold of Islam and they should not be washed nor buried with the Muslims, etc. and all their Islamic rights. Uh, then he said, وَهَذَا قَوْلَ الْجَمْهُورَ الْعُلَمَاءَ وَإِمَامْ أَحْمِدْ وَجَمْ كَبِيرْ مِنَ الصَّحَابَ وَتَابِعِينَ كما في كتاب الصلاة لمحمد بن نصر المروزي يرونه كافرا وهو حق لحديث الأحذى الذي بيننا وبينهم الصلاة فمن تركها فقد كفر رواه الترمذي عن بريدة رضي الله تعالى عنه. So a group, a large group of the uh, of the scholars. And Imam, uh, a majority of the scholars, a jam, uh, jamur ulama, majority of the scholars hold the view that the person who's left the prayer is not a disbeliever. <clears throat> but Imam Ahmed and a huge group of the Sahaba and the Tabi'een hold that the person who's left the prayer, and also as it was narrated in uh, by Imam Muhammad ibn Nasr al Marwazi in his book Kitab al Salat. Uh, that they, they, they view that the person who's left the prayer to be a disbeliever. And their evidence is very strong. And this is also uh, the state, uh, uh, the, the Ahla Hadith that hold this view as well. And their evidence is very strong. One of the uh, evidences or the deal that they use is a hadith of the Prophet وسلم, that was narrated by uh, Buraydah. رضي الله تعالى عنه هو سيد الأحد الذي بيننا وبينهم الصلاة فمن تركها فقد كفر and this is in uh, uh, Tirmidhi and the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said the pact which is between us and between them is the prayer so whoever leaves it has disbelieved so this is a pretty as the ulama say a nas sarih uh, with regards to um with regards to takfir of the person who's left the prayer. <clears throat> and there's a, a lot of other uh, evidences, also the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Tawbah, فَإِن تَابُوا وَأَقَامُوا الصَّلَاةِ وَآتُوا الزَّكَاةِ فَأَخْوَانَكُمْ فِي الدِّينِ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is speaking about those people who are, are, are disbelievers, that if they make tawbah, meaning tawbah from their disbelief, uh, and they established the prayer and they paid the zakat then they're your brothers in faith so that shows us uh, something I want to highlight here is it's very important for us to have al-wala'u al bara and be balanced and be balanced that al-wala'u al bara shows us is a principle that you never should be excessive in your hatred for anyone nor excessive in your love for anyone and the reason being is because someone can leave uh, disbelief to belief. And what just overnight be your brother. And someone from Ahl Bidah could be from Ahl Sunnah, just like that. Because they made Toba to Allah. And they left off their Bidah, or they left off their Kufr, they left off their Zandaka. So that's why it shows you the beauty of Islam and the balance of Islam. And likewise, someone who you're praising excessively, even though they're making mistakes and sins, they could leave. Islam and disbelieve in Allah as a wajal. They can become your worst nightmare and your worst enemy and fight you. So it shows us uh, the importance of being balanced. Uh, the shahid in this ayat, the uh, main point of the mention in this ayat, where the ulama they 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 stand by, 
So in Tabu Aqamu Salat. So showing us that by making Tawbah, you know, leaving off disbelief, and establishing the prayer, that those are things that enter you into Iman. And likewise, leaving those things takes you out of Iman. Uh, also, the, the one who explained this treatise, uh, Sheikh Abi Abdullah al Musni'i, I believe this is his statement. He says, وقول الجمهور رجعه شيخ الألباني رحمه الله تعالى وهو أقرب عندي والله أعلم. He said that Imam Al-Albani, Rahmatullahi, he held the view, uh, he, his view is in accordance with the Jamhur of ulama, the most of the scholars. Imam Al-Albani, on this issue, his view is in accordance with most of the scholars of the Ummah, in that the uh, the one who leads the prayer is not a disbeliever, but instead a wicked sinner who needs to make toba. And likewise, he said, and that is the, to me, in my view, my humble view, that is the most correct view. That's what the author here, the one explaining Imam Mukbil's uh, treatise uh, states. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. Then the shaykh, so he said, oh, ridda. Oridda meaning leaving uh, Islam and going to disbelief. And we seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from that. And Ridda, a habit of Allah, as a Sharia, uh, sharia uh, term, it is uh, returning to disbelief after having believed. Um, and this is in accordance uh, as a Sharia bima'na. ارتكاب مسلم ما يجب ما يجب كفره كفره بدليل من كتابي وسنتي ما توفر شروط وانتفاء الموانع. So this was also related to the issue of takfir. So he's saying the meaning of this as a Sharia principle is that a Muslim doing that which necessitates him being a disbeliever. You're meaning that something that for sure takes him out of the fold of Islam uh, from, with evidence be dalil from the Quran and the Sunnah the message of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with the shurut the conditions for takfir as we already mentioned in the previous uh, lessons being in place and wa intifal mu'anit those things would prohibit from making takfir also uh, those prohibitors not being there meaning there are no nothing that prohibits from making takfir the proof has been established that an individual has left the fold of Islam. So, in that situation, uh, this is what it means, ridda, ridda on Islam. And those are just some of the uh, issues there, and we'll stop there. And we ask that Allah the Almighty accepts our good and forgives our evil, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from kufr, shirk, and nifaq. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with ikhlas, with the bad ala sunnah. And may Allah tabarak wa ta'ala forgive us of our sins and bless us with jannah of our dose. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika and usurika bika wa ana alamu staghfiruka liman alamu. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.